All right, today is going to be a what's in my bag video. Uh, as I prep for this Boundary Waters trip, uh, I'm going to go through some of the things that I'm going to have in my pack, such as my fishing gear, things that are essentials for this trip for those of you that might not have done it and are looking for a little bit of advice. So that's what today's video is going to be about. All right, so for those of you that don't know where the Boundary Waters are at, um, it is this portion right here of forestry that's along the U.S.-Canadian border. Uh, and in particular, where we're going is over here. There's Ely, Minnesota, and we are going to be going up here and putting in at the Mudro entry, and then eventually making our way up into some of these other chain of lakes. So we're going to end up going through Lower Basswood Falls and up into Wednesday Bay. So that just gives you an idea of where the Boundary Waters are at. So now that I gave you an idea of where the Boundary Waters are at, let's go ahead and dive into some of the gear that I'm going to be taking on the trip. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff that I'm going to be taking. Um, and you may think that this looks like a lot of stuff for one person, but there's going to be a total of four of us on this trip. Um, so in the big duffel bag to the, to the left of the screen there, um, there's two four-person tents in there. Uh, we like our space, so that's why we're bringing those big tents. Um, and now I'm going to kind of go through individually uh, what all of these items are and why I like bringing them. All right, so first up on the, uh, the list of items is sleeping arrangements. You know, other than the two tents that we're going to be bringing, um, you definitely want to make sure you are as comfortable as possible when you're going to bed at night. You know, everybody likes to be comfortable, warm, cozy. Uh, you want to be prepared for that stuff. So um, in this little compression sack, this is a camp pillow. Uh, brand is Field and Stream. Uh, I took this on the last couple of trips. It's pretty nice. Now, everybody knows that you're going to be bringing a sleeping bag, but what some people might not know is you definitely want to bring one of these little inflatable mats. Now, it, it, it's in a pretty compact little package right here, but it folds out and gives you an inch and a half of um, foam and air to separate you from the ground. Um, because if you sleep directly on the ground, you can catch a pretty bad chill if it uh, gets a little cold out at night. So once you got this laid down, you're going to put your sleeping bag on it. Now in this is uh, a standard rectangular style bag. The first couple of years I did take a mummy style. Eh, and that was a little claustrophobic for me. Um, I did like how small and compact it was. It's literally half the size of this, um, but I like a little more freedom when I'm when I'm sleeping. So I opted to bring this bigger bag. Um, now it is rated for 20 degree weather. Um, the other mummy style bag that I had was rated for only 40 degrees. Um, and it did get chilly the first year uh, that I that I took that bag up with me. Um, I think it got down into the 30s one of the nights. Uh, I got up, had a you know half inch of frost on all of our stuff outside at the campsite. So definitely want to make sure you bring a bag that is rated for below 32 degrees. Uh, that that's for sure. That way you are not getting chilled and you don't risk catching any type of cold or anything like that. So that's the uh, Sleeping gear, mat, camp pillow, 20 degree rated sleeping bag. Now I'm going to show you what's going to carry all of my gear. And I have a Kelty backpack. It is a 70 liter backpack, uh, tons of compartments. It's water resistant. Um, I do typically scotch guard it before each trip to give it that added water resistance. Tons of pockets. It's very comfortable. Um, has this built-in bracket, this little cage system on it, um, lumbar support. It's these are gel-filled pads. It's very comfortable for the trek in and out. More than enough room to keep all of my stuff that I'm bringing. Uh, ended up getting this on sale, I believe, at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. So that's, that's my pack. Again, Kelty is the brand. 
and this is what I bring to carry all my goods on the Boundary Waters trip. Now to go along with my Kelty backpack, this is a little deal that I picked up from Walmart. I think it was only $5. But basically, it just drapes over your backpack and then has little bungee cords at the end. Cinches down. It is a little rain protector for your backpack. So I'm going to try that out this year and uh, and see how it how it works. Again, I did do the uh, 3M Scotchgard water repellent on this just for the added protection. But uh, definitely don't want to end up at the campsite after a long day's journey in with wet gear. Uh, that has happened to me before. It's not fun trying to set up a tent and then hang up line to try to dry out your sleeping bag before you can go to sleep at night. Not a good situation to be in. So going to try this little little guy out. All right, now on to some of the clothing items that I'm going to be bringing. You always want to make sure that you have a good pair of boots that you're going to be bringing. Um, these are Red Wing hiking boots. They got Vibram soles on them, so they're very grippy. Love these. I took them on the last couple of trips that I've gone up there. I uh, haven't had an issue with them. Treat them every season uh, to make sure that they do stay waterproof because uh, you're getting in and out of the canoe a lot you're along a lot of shoreline um, so you definitely don't want wet feet once you get up there so on the clothes pants these ones are you know the moisture wicking uh, water repellent they have dual purpose they have zippers here so they do turn into shorts if you get a warmer day um, UV rated Shirt, that's moisture wicking and waterproof. This is a Jawbone brand here. That's new for this year that I'm going to be bringing. So you want your clothes to have that added extra functionality. You don't just want to wear, I mean you could, but you don't just want to wear normal jeans or anything like that. You want something that's going to help you stay dry. You don't want something that's going to hold water if you get wet. You want something that's going to dry out quickly. So if you do run into a bit of weather, these are rain pants, Field and Stream brand. Took these on the last couple of trips. Came in handy. Columbia Windbreaker slash rain jacket. Um, used both of those uh, the last couple of times that I went up there because we ran into some late fall rain showers that moved through, um, and it rained for about a day and a half straight. Um, so everything was pretty waterlogged. Definitely glad that I had these two items. Um, and again, I treat these pieces also with uh, the spray-on water repellent uh, to make sure that I don't have any issues uh, once, once I get up there to the campsite. Now moving on to some accessories here. So... The nights do get cold. I would suggest bringing a beanie up there. Um, and then with that, the set of gloves that have maybe some rubber underside to them, um, just to take the chill off uh, when you're doing an early morning canoe. Uh, sometimes those paddles can be pretty cold from sitting outside all night, especially if it gets down into the low 40s or high 30s. Um, you'll, you'll be glad you have these, otherwise you'll have uh, some pretty cold tingly fingers uh, in the morning as you're paddling out to uh, to do some early morning fishing. Also, nice full brim hat. Uh, this does repel water as well. It's breathable um, and it also gives you added protection from the sun. Um, so those are some of the clothing items that I bring on the trip just for some examples. Now of course you're going to want to bring an extra pair of socks and, and extra pants and shirts and things like that. That way, if you do get wet or something rips or tears on the trip, you're not dealing with it the whole time. So I typically bring a backup pair of everything uh, to prepare for a worst-case scenario once you're out there. Because you definitely don't want to deal with uh, a ripped shirt or ripped pants for the whole entire trip. It's better to... to pack an extra pair. I, I, again, I know it's added weight and, and a lot of people are very weight conscious with their packs when they go in there, but it's better safe than sorry. Uh, you don't want to get yourself sick or something if you rip your 
rain pants, and then you have to deal with two, two days of rain or something like that. All right, now on to food, water, and fire starting equipment. Um, you definitely want to make sure you have a nice dry bag like this one to store your food in. Um, and it also makes it easy when you hang it up in the tree because uh, you have these straps that fold down and kind of create a loop uh, so you can string it up from the tree. Um, so this is a rather large one, but again, we're, there's four of us going out there um, and, and it's a, a four or five night trip. So uh, you definitely want to make sure you have a decent package to put your food and snacks and things like that in. So I would suggest bringing one of these. This little guy here, this is our water filtration bladder. So it folds up into this little packet here, but inside there's a filter housing here and then you connect your downspout tube here at the bottom to come off and you just uh, go out to the lake, fill it up with water and then it filters everything out for you. Uh, and it's just a gravity fed bag that you hang from a branch at, at your base camp. Uh, really handy. Um, used this the first couple of trips that I went on and uh, they're they're not cheap though. I, that's that's like an $80, $90 uh, water filtration bladder. So now onto this. Fire starting. You want to make sure that you bring a few different items with you. Uh, to give yourself some options while you uh, while you're up there um, because sometimes you're dealing with very wet conditions uh, and you want to make sure you give yourself multiple ways to to start a campfire because fire is essential when you're out camping in the wilderness like that for several days um, so just your standard Bic lighter these are waterproof matches here uh, and that's a magnesium flint strike so you just shave off pieces of it and then use the striker uh, to ignite it. Uh, that's great in wet conditions. Here's some fire starter. Gonna try this out. I've never used this before, but uh, basically you just pour out some of the little granules and uh, ignite it and it's supposed to stay burning for quite some time and work in wet conditions. So looking forward to trying that out this year. Uh, but again, you want to make sure you have multiple ways and every opportunity possible to get a fire started when you're out there. All right, so once you get your fire started, obviously you're going to be cooking some dinner, hopefully, as long as the fishing has been good. Um, so I just have a cheap nonstick pot that's fairly light. Uh, these are actual uh, nonstick pizza pans that I found for fairly cheap, um, but these are going to double as our plates that we're going to be eating with. Uh, nice little non-stick pan with a uh, foldable handle because again you want to minimize the amount of space you're taking up in, in, in your bags and then just some cheaper plastic kitchenware there to, to cook with um, so that's that's what I bring you know again these this pot and pan is a little big but uh, like I said there's gonna be a total of four of us on this trip so we're gonna be doing a decent amount of cooking so we need to Make sure we have enough utensils and uh, and cooking items. All right, so now we're into some of the uh, added items that uh, I typically bring on this type of trip. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with, first and foremost, uh, safety kit. Now this uh, has all sorts of stuff in there from treating burns to cuts, breaks, things like that. Plus it also has uh, burn cream and uh, painkillers, things like that. Uh, so if anybody twists an ankle, um, you want to make sure you have one of these because once you get out there, um, you are away from everybody. Um, I know on a few of the trips, uh, we went a couple days without even seeing somebody canoe by uh, on one of the lakes. Um, so you want to make sure that you have a decent first aid kit and you want to make sure that all of your stuff inside is up to date and not expired. Um, I just went through this, checked it all out. Um, bought some things to replenish it. Make sure you have one of these if you go out into the Boundary Waters and you plan on staying more than a night and you're pretty far away from everybody, so make sure you have one. On to lighting. So when it gets dark out there, it 
gets dark. There are no street lights. You can see all of the stars. And on some of the nights, you can see the haze of the Milky Way. You can see overhead satellites passing by. It's pretty neat. Um, that being said, you want to make sure you have plenty of light if you're going to be walking around your campsite at night when it's dark. So headlamp is essential. Now this one has multiple functions on it. High, low beam, SOS type flash on it. And then this is just an LED flashlight that's pretty bright. It's an anodized aluminum body on it so it can take some punishment. Set of Nikon binoculars I'm going to bring. I haven't brought them before. I, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I really want to bring them. They are pretty heavy, but it'd be neat to have those to do some nature watching while I'm out there. Still kind of on the fence of having these though. So this, this is an emergency poncho. This is in case my rain gear gets ruined or waterlogged. I have this as a backup. It's light, doesn't take up much space. Definitely want to have something like that. This little waterproof bag here. This is usually what I keep my camping permit, my fishing permit, and, and things like that in. Uh, you want to make sure that those documents are good in case a park ranger does come by and, uh, and wants to look at them. This is definitely worth having. Fairly cheap. Keeps your valuables dry. Definitely recommend having that. Now we are going up in the fall and it should be cold enough where we wouldn't need bug spray, but it's not a bad idea to have it. Biting flies are pretty bad up there, but usually the time of year that we go, they're not really an issue. Out of these, just some basic walkie-talkies. Uh, they got like 38 different channels on it uh, and sub-channels, but um, great for having if you want to tr test out a few different fishing spots say you know the second canoe wants to go to the other side of the lake and the other one wants to go check a bay somewhere else you can talk to each other let each other know what the fishing's like um, nice little thing to have and while you're out there in the uh, the wilderness camping for a few days it's not a bad idea to have some of these these are biodegradable wipe down towels they're kind of like a wet one type deal um you know obviously there's no showers or anything like that out there and it's getting to be that time of year where it's a little too cold to uh to take a dip in one of the lakes um so these are pretty handy you just wipe yourself down with them and then they biodegrade so it's kind of nice hatchet that's a must-have uh, when you're out there um, to help split wood, things like that. Um, very handy. Recommend if you have a group of people, make sure you have a couple of them with you. Uh, always nice having those. Makes chopping wood a lot easier. This is just a little pocket sharpener. So it's carbide and ceramic on it. And it has a little deal that you can flip out and sharpen your stuff with as well. It's kind of nice. Having a dull blade makes work harder and more dangerous, uh, so you want to make sure your blades are sharp. This is just a little survival knife that I bring with uh, to kind of keep. Decent blade, has its own little built-in sharpener. Um, that's always nice having too. A little added protection too um, with, with something like that. All right. So now that I've gone through all the camp accessories that I bring, now on to the all-important stuff of fishing equipment. Um, now on this trip, you want to make sure that uh, you have a decent rod and reel setup. Um, and I would suggest not bringing anything uh, overly expensive or something you, you would get mad at if it broke. Um, so this is a pretty basic setup. It's just an ugly stick. And... Uh, there's the version of it. Um, so it's just a basic ugly stick that you can pick up for 50 bucks at the store um, with a Fluger uh, spinning reel on it. Um, the line that I use is Power Pro. Um, it is 30 pound test. Uh, but the nice thing with Power Pro, it's a, it's a braided line. So 
it's 30 pound test, but it's only an eight pound diameter, so you can fit a lot more of it on the on your spools. Um, and then, as everybody knows, while you're fishing up there, you definitely want to have a steel lead. I would suggest fishing with a steel lead while you're up there in those lakes. Um, a lot of northern, and you don't want to lose a decent lure um, that you might be using while you're fishing for smallmouth or something to a northern that, that happened to bite your line. All right, now a quick glimpse into the tackle box that I bring. Um, you want to make sure you have one that has a shoulder strap, ease of carrying, um, and you don't want to bring something that's too big. Uh, this this is a fairly decent um, bag as far as what you can fit into it without really making it too bulky to carry around or bring into the boundary waters. Um, you know, again, you're going to be portaging a, quite a few times to get into whatever lake you, you want to get into. Um, so you want to make it as easy as possible for all the gear you're bringing in. So that being said, in here, now I know you always want to make sure you have a decent multi-tool. This is a Leatherman multi-tool. It has tons of stuff on it. This is the Leatherman Wave. Uh, so it has a file on it, a couple different knives, a serrated blade, um, opens up, has pliers in it, um, different screwdriver tips, has a set of scissors on it. This thing, you want to make sure you bring something like this inside of the Boundary Waters. It makes everything a lot easier, not only for fishing, but in case you run into any issues at the campsite. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the goods of the bag. Um, now that I pulled the cases out, so in here, uh, just have some stringers for the day's catch. Wanna have those. In here, these are where I keep my extra hooks and some of my extra jigs and things like that. Um, so if I decide to use any type of soft bait or anything like that, can't have enough hooks. Now in this other side compartment, this is where I keep my spare line and you always want to have some of these. You don't want to stick your hand into the mouth of a northern or a walleye. These are essential also on this fishing trip. Here is a line. It's Power Pro 30 pound test. There's 300 yards of it on this spool. Well, not anymore because I used it to string up my, my two rigs that I'm bringing. But, uh, this is the brand that I use. It's it's great. I do not have any complaints about this. Then I have one of these electronic scales. That way it gives you an idea of the fish that you're catching. You catch a 36 inch northern and you want to find out how much it weighs, you can weigh it. It's just a nice little thing to bring on the trip to give you an idea of, of what what your catch is. All right, now on to some of the lures that I'm bringing. I know this seems like a lot, but you don't want to get up there with a very limited selection of equipment to use and find out the fish may not be biting on, on a specific lure that you decided to bring up there. Um, so with that, I got a few different jigs, some soft jigs, some, some feather type jigs, spinner baits. These are just blue fox spinners. Um, top water poppers. I found that, you know, top water poppers are these here. I found that those work great in calm water at night. Okay, on to some of the other uh, lures that I bring. Uh, these are just some rattle, rapalas, some deep divers, um, some more rattle trap styles, a couple spinners here, um, and a lot of spoons. A lot of spoons with a lot of different colors. Um, you want to have some variety, that way if they're not biting on a certain color combination, you have what they might be biting on. All right, then in here I have a variety of plastics that I'm gonna bring up to try. Now, all of these aren't just for me. I'm gonna give some to some of the other guys up there uh, to try out. See what works, what doesn't work, um, because it's hard to bring live bait in that far on a trip that's this long. So, plastics, Good alternative to live bait, and uh, and we'll see how they work. 
All right, so that's it for a What's in My Bag episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any other suggestions on what you might bring on a trip like this. Um, and uh, I'll give you an update on after the trip. Uh, let you know how it went, things that I wanted to bring or should have brought once I got up there and kind of realized what, uh, what I might have needed. So thanks for watching.